For today's video, we're going to examine the rules involved with the letters IE and interchanged EI. Same letters, just different orientations. Many of us learn this rule with the rhyme I before E except after C. Um, not the best poem, but it is pretty effective in terms of committing uh, this rule to memory. So again, it's I before E except after C. However, again, with English, we've got a multitude of exceptions, and uh, this rule is not, uh, this rule does not avoid such exceptions. So let's go ahead and dive a little deeper into the rule. So as a general truth, I will come before E, except after the letter C, in which case you would switch the ordering of I and E to E and I. Uh, so looking at the examples that I give you, receive. You'll notice I have EI, because after C, I can't have IE, it has to be EI. Friend, I have IE. Notice how the orientation has changed since it is not preceding the letter C, so it will always be IE. You'll notice that in the third example I provide, it doesn't actually adhere or stick to the rule we just discussed. So here I have EI, oops, if I can switch, here I have EI uh, at the top on the word receive because after C, Following the rule, I changed IE to EI. Friend, oh, okay, there's no C, so I stick with IE. However, here I have EI similar to the way I have for receive. However, in the word neighbor, there's no letter C that would suggest I would need to switch the orientation of I and E to E and I. And we'll talk a little bit about why. I'm sure you can already guess the word I'm gonna use being an exception. So this is yet another exception to our rule. So let's talk about it. So you wouldn't use IE in neighbor. Um, that's because for this word, it depends on the sound which is created by E and I. Uh, it sounds like A, kind of like you would hear in uh, the number eight, right? So we have, oops, eight. So here, it's not I before E, uh, it's EI to make eight, like almost like eight. Another instance where we're looking for that A sound created by the E and I would be, you know, when you're measuring someone's weight. So we have EI, right? So here we are, I've switched it again, despite the fact that there is no C present. In neighbor, same issue, you have that A Y sound that's being generated by the EI. So neighbor, eight, weight. So this new sound is really what you're looking to reproduce in these words. The following examples I give you are what are known as true exceptions, meaning they don't adhere or follow any particular rule. They have their own rules. So yeah, I know you're gonna have to commit these to memory, especially moving forward, because these words are pretty commonly used and you will need to know how to spell them. Um, so I do encourage you to make flashcards if you haven't already. You should see the word height. So again, I've got the EI orientation instead of the IE. Uh, I've got, uh, excuse me, I've got leisure. I've got weird. Caffeine, which your parents know pretty well. And then ancient. Here's another one. Oh, gosh. Sorry, guys. Uh, and then ancient. You'll notice that there's the letter C, which... Again, going back to our earlier rule where it's I before E except after C. Well, here's the letter C, should be EI. However, for this word, it is not. It is an exception, a true exception. It just doesn't play by the rules because. And the same thing for species. You know, I've got my C, but then instead of EI, I have IE. It's just one of those things that you're gonna have to remember. Um, so again, if you haven't already, I do encourage you to make some kind of flashcards uh, to at least provide you uh, with the rule and also some of the exceptions and perhaps some examples of those exceptions uh, just to help commit those to memory, especially when you're offline and trying to practice on your own. So anywho, for now, uh, I will say goodbye until the next video where we discuss some additional spelling rules. Uh, all right, thank you for joining me.